going to go next with, to Lyndon Gao, who is the co-founder and CEO of Caper. So Caper is a New York-based retail technology company leading the development of an AI-powered self-checkout shopping cart. Their smart carts are found in major grocery stores across the U.S. and Canada. Uh, their goal is to really reshape the physical retail landscape and transform the way that people shop in physical stores. We're really excited to hear from Lyndon now how he envisions the future of grocery retail to be. Lyndon. Sure. Hey, uh, thanks a lot, Abby, uh, for the introduction. Uh, so obviously, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of really exciting uh, computer vision technologies in the food space. Uh, before I really get into too much of the our core technology, I think kind of quickly going through the overall market is really interesting because despite uh, the COVID situation alongside with the acceleration of e-commerce and the grocery space, we still observe about more than 90% of total U.S. retail still transacted offline. Uh, if you look at the uh, online e-commerce grocery, for example, despite the huge uptick and acceleration of the adoption of uh, Instacart, for example, uh, online e-commerce as it stands around this time is still about 6% of total grocery um, transactions. So it's a very, very large market. Average consumers visit the grocery store about 1.6 times per week. Uh, and grocery is the second largest discretionary spending, about 7% of the total uh, discretionary spending here. However, when we look at the physical shopping space, uh, you see that physical stores have not really innovated in the past hundreds of years. Um, you know, if you walk into a grocery store 100 years ago versus today, it basically looks the same, the cashier lanes and so forth. What has really transformed this industry is Amazon Go uh, about three years ago, introducing uh, this cashierless checkout free retail experience where customers could directly grab an item that they want and leave the store. And I think it's kind of worth a little bit of time just walking through a little bit about this Amazon Go technology and, and how does that compare to uh, what we have built. Um, so if you want to build an autonomous store, I think the first thing you need to nail down is who, right? exactly who is paying. So in the beginning, typically, you know, individuals will have to download this Amazon Go app, tie it to their Amazon account or their credit card, uh, and then they'll scan the QR code of, um, um, on their phone in the stall before they enter the store. So that effectively ties you, that individual, directly to your payment. And then you see a ton of overhead cameras. These overhead cameras are high quality image processing cameras where it's leveraging multi-view object tracking. Uh, so it triangulates information uh, from different camera angles to precisely pin down to where you are inside the store. Um, and they leverage information based on your arm, your, your shape, uh, geometry, appearance, color um, to really map you to uh, precisely as you go through the entire store. And then the second component is the what, right? Uh, what is, how can you identify what item was being picked up? And in here, you could see that first, the first portion is you have a shelf camera. The shelf cameras inside these Amazon Go stores are able to detect gestures. Uh, so when you reach out and grab something, that's something that they're able to, to recognize. So this is a quick example of action recognition. And then the second portion is you have voice sensors and cameras that are inside the shelves. So when you pick up this particular item, let's say it has this bubbly next to me, if you pick up bubbly, the weight of this item is lifted um, and, we'll know and we'll know the precise location and the item that is being picked up. Uh, they also combine this information with the camera visual uh, recognition uh, prediction to precisely pin down this item. So kind of to tie everything back together a little bit. So you have the who, who comes into the store and they, the camera is tracking you everywhere you go. And then when you see the shelves and you pick up some certain items, the smart sensors and the shelf cameras are able to pick that up and tie this to you. So look, there are a couple of setbacks uh, in this Amazon Go concept. Um, number one problem here is spatial density. So when you use a multi uh, multi-view object detection model, uh, you're reliant on your cameras from different angles to be able to pick up and track customers as they walk through the store. In a store, in a store where it's extremely crowded, as you can see in the background, um, it's extremely difficult to 
keep track of uh, customers. That's why in the, in, in the beginning, Amazon Go had this restriction of number of people who could go inside the store because if there are a lot of people, um, it could mess it up. And then the second portion is if you think about lost track, it's actually a very serious issue. Uh, if you track the wrong person, you might actually end up uh, calculating the wrong purchase for your shopper. And if you end up losing track, then you lose the entire value of the merchandise that this customer has. So it's a very, very tricky situation. This is why uh, you see that Amazon Go, typical, their typical store hasn't scaled to really big. And their larger uh, grocery store, uh, that you, uh, as which you would call it, is actually only about 10,000 square feet, uh, probably a little less, about eight to nine. Uh, which is, is bigger than your typical 1,800 square feet stores, but it, it is still substantially smaller than your Whole Foods stores, which is typically about 30,000 square feet. Um, the second portion is the GPU compute uh, constraint, because when you're monitoring the entire store, you're processing an enormous amount of data. So for example, in Walmart's intelligent retail labs, uh, they've put together a similar setup as Amazon Go, uh, inside one of their stores in Long Island, in New York, I actually went and visited. And kind of in their inch fun facts uh, portion, they said that uh, uh, the GPUs process about 1.6 terabytes of data per second. Uh, this costs millions and millions of dollars. Uh, and that makes it not very scalable if you consider this last point, which is return on investment. Uh, typical Amazon Go store, you know, it'll cost anywhere between one to $3 million to build. Uh, if you have you know, inside a small store like this, which is 1,800 square feet, you could probably save about one cashier maybe. Assume a cashier's uh, annual salary is $30,000. It'll take you anywhere between 30 to 100 years to break even. So the, the return on investment, the cost portion doesn't really make sense. Um, and the last part is it requires a huge amount of infrastructure overhaul and operational maintenance to, to implement this. So it's foregone opportunity cost. So kind of quickly jumping into what we have built here. Uh, we've, we've built a smart shopping cart, which is basically you have the Amazon Go sensor fusion technology packed into the cart. And also at the same time, our cameras uh, are monitoring the cart as well. So we've essentially simplified Amazon Go's problem where, whereby you're monitoring anywhere between 1,800 square feet store to 10,000 square feet store to 100,000 square feet store into a problem that's very digestible, which is we're monitoring probably about, you know, a five square feet of area within the basket. So who, uh, to kind of go off from exactly earlier, how do we solve that who? Uh, you don't need very difficult computer vision detection to uh, get this particular person to pay. So we just have a payment terminal on our cart. Uh, but when it comes to the what, um, how we solve this problem is first we start with the scan version of the cart where customers can scan the barcode of the item and put it inside the cart. They can pay and then they can leave the store. But over time, as you can see here, some of the live footages from our cameras, every single time a customer scans an item, they're labeling these images for us. So they're helping us uh, co to collect training data so that we can leverage it for the scanless experience. So this is one of the uh, images of our computer vision and a quick video of what the scanless experience look like inside a store right now is you could directly just grab something that's off the, uh, off the shelves toss it in so for example you have stacy chips uh you see that uh you know these are very similar types of even very similar types of packaging we're able to differentiate the differences and I think the most interesting part is that we leverage less than 0.01% of Amazon's total co compute per second. And we're drastically cheaper uh, so that implementation makes a lot more sense. Um, and really interestingly, I think the, the whole piece, right? Typically people walk into a store shop for 40 minutes. Checkout is probably about the last five minutes of their experience. But what we want to tackle is the entire shopping journey, that entire 40 minutes. So we could walk into a store. Uh, if a customer picks up a cart, we can show you nearby deals. We can tell you where items are. We can give you recipe recommendations. We can give you personalized recommendations. And then thereafter, you could check out. So it's a whole suite of experience uh, that's accompanying the customers. And we're able to help guide their purchase decision, which is very powerful.
And a, and a couple of last note in terms of, you know, in case if you're curious about where is the future of uh, retail going. In our opinion, we believe that um, you're going to see the start warehouse concept where uh, if some of you have heard of automatic warehouse, Amazon Kiva or Ocado for some of these grocery stores, are, these are very exciting opportunities, but at the same time, physical retail is not going anywhere. And where we see the future is that your local stores will become the automatic fulfillment center where you could not only shop there, but people will also, people and robots will also be inside the store to be picking up these items and, um, and fulfilling, fulfilling it on the e-commerce, uh, for e-commerce customers. And this is where we see our part play a role down, down the line where we could facilitate that automatic robotic uh, fulfillment at the local store level, given we know where all the items are, where the shopping patterns are, and we, and we already have the visual technologies in place. The second portion is another vertical uh, expansion into the inventory management and retail op becoming a retail operating system. Um, that is a very, very powerful area where we could help retailers with inventory management, inventory forecasting, and ultimately becoming their point, uh, their default point of sale system. 